Um, I'll start with the uh, Canadian Taxpayers Federation. Of course, Canada is uh, is, is facing a labour shortage, and um, and so as we should be all uh, always, uh, I think it's incumbent on, on us uh, as stewards of the economy to make sure and just to do the right thing that uh, workers are fully incentivized uh, for the hard work that they do. Canadians, of course, work extremely hard, uh, some very long hours, um, and uh, it's it's my belief that the government is taking too large a portion and that doing things like tripling the carbon tax and increasing payroll taxes will do nothing but disincentivize work. Uh, uh, Mr. Franco, would you care to comment? Uh, 72% of Canadians in a recent poll said that they pay too much tax. And if we want to encourage work, then we need to stop punishing work. And what we have seen is at the worst possible time, the government raise payroll taxes. So if you're making $65,000 this year, then the government is taking nearly $4,500 directly from you uh, through your CPP and EI tax. And then you have to add on what your employer must also pay through the CPP and EI tax. So if we want to encourage more work, we should stop increasing taxes on Canadian workers. I just want to, well, of course, climate change is a, is a, a, very, a very real concern. Um, but my, my, my challenge with some of these liberal policies, one is they haven't hit once the emission targets. But my second concern is that as they increase the burden on taxpayers, on companies, on individuals, and on corporations, it gives them less ability to innovate, uh, to be more sustainable, to embrace uh, technologies that are coming out, such as carbon capture. Uh, could, could you comment on that, whether you would agree with that? Well, I think making it more expensive for people to fuel up on their way to work uh, is, is a tax plan, not an environmental plan. And I think many Canadians right now are struggling, have been struggling through two years of the pandemic, are struggling now with, with high inflation. And I think we also need to look around the world and what other countries are doing. We saw Australia cut its gas tax in half, South Korea providing gas tax relief, Germany providing gas tax relief. I, I mentioned the United Kingdom providing gas tax relief. And immediately the government could hold a press conference and immediately... Um, um, help save drivers about 20 bucks every time they fuel up their minivan at the pumps. I mean, they can save drivers between 18 and 30 cents per liter by scrapping or suspending gas tax, federal gas taxes. Of, of course, part of your mandate would be to examine tax policy and the equity and the fairness of it. So one thing that's always struck me about it is that, I, and I never understood the rationale. In fact, when I had the Ministry of Finance, they just said, because it's easier, which seems so such a wrong answer. And that was the charging of GST on the carbon tax. That makes no sense from a tax policy perspective, from an equity perspective, or really any perspective other than as the Ministry of Finance just said, it's easier. Um, it, what's your thoughts on that? The tax on tax is completely unfair, and as inflation increases, Canadians are paying more because of the tax on tax. When fuel goes up, the tax on tax costs Canadian more. When the carbon tax increase, the tax on tax costs Canadians more. And, you know, I've, I've spent a lot of my time talking about the carbon tax hike after carbon tax hike after carbon tax hike during the middle of the pandemic, but there's also going to be a second carbon tax coming through in through fuel regulations. Um, and this one also has no rebate, and the government's own analysis has shown that it could cost a another up to 13 cents per litre to the price of gasoline by 2030.